I'm about to start stitching the uh, reinforcements onto Flint Steel's holster. I want to pick a spot that's going to get the least amount of stress to end. So I'm, I want to end over in this corner because my front sight will go down this part of the holster. And I put a spacer in there. Well, not really a spacer, but I do leave it a little uh, more forgiving for the front sight. So this is a good place to end. It'll get the least amount of stress. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch her up. And then we'll be back. Well, there we go. Takes a while to stitch that down. But... I think you can see it looks pretty nice. The white top stitch really looks good. The uh, the thread itself will clean up a little bit when it gets top coated. Uh, I like it. I'm digging it. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, I have to burnish a little down here because I won't be able to do that when it's completed. Finish up my burnishing around everything else that's that needs to be burnished now before it gets finished. And then uh, we'll stitch her all together. Glue it up and stitch it. Hey folks, I'm back. I'm about to continue on with the Flint and Steel Survival Holster. Um, in case you don't <laughs> don't understand or don't know, you know there's uh, always more than one thing going on at a time. Um, this is a magazine pouch. Uh, this is MI Woodsman's knife sheath which I'm setting aside in the mag pouch and we're going to work on this. At this point the inside's done all the, the burnishing around the areas that I can now is done so I have marks you can see them better on this one inside here and those are actually stitch lines but they're on the inside of the holster right now so that I know where to glue to. So I'm going to glue this up and glue this one and put them together and I'll be back. Hey folks, all glued up. Uh, everything went smooth. <laughs> it's a lot of surface area to glue so when you're putting it together it's already really nearly dry and with contact cement <clears throat> Excuse me, when it gets to that point, it's gonna stick right now. So you have to be very careful when you're putting it together. That's why I didn't do it on camera. Because um, I needed to concentrate. I've marked my stitch line, both this stitch line and the other stitch line. I need to finish sand all the way around. Not, not so much finish sand, but you know, there's some spots that are still proud. And it needs to be, the contour needs to be brought to where it needs to be. And then I can mark my belt loops. Kind of a pain in the butt. Belt loops are the bane of my existence. I can, I have to work so hard to make belt loops. And I know there's probably a slot cutter out there that make it so much easier. But I don't have one. And I don't foresee me buying one in the near future. Um, I need... A minimum of a one and a half inch slot and if it's a thicker belt it needs to be a bigger one so <laughs> it needs to be an inch and a half a little longer than an inch and a half I go probably an inch almost about an inch and an eighth maybe an inch and three quarter and that'll fit an inch and a half belt pretty well very well actually um, you know my hold my personal holster I've got a thick gun belt that I made so it's made for holding up a gun um, I just don't do a lot of belts they're very very time consuming maybe if I get a machine someday anyway so we're gonna get our edges trimmed up I will use this piece of the pattern to mark um, for my belt loops for my belt slots and that will come as soon as I'm done sanding all this, I'm going to use my Dremel tool to do it, and uh, then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I did go around and I got the first burnish done. I'm going to burnish it probably two more times. Um, at this point, it's all hand sanding. 
got my 220 grit, so I'll use the 220, and then I will switch to, uh, I think I've got 400 here, but that'll be the final. I'll use the 220 probably two or three times on it, and I should just do a burnishing video, but you can kind of see how imperfect it is, and as you sand, I don't know if you can tell or not. Should be able to tell where the, the sandpaper hit. Or the high spots and the low spots are where it didn't hit. So you kind of got to get the two to match up. Sometimes I will. Um, I used to have a wheel sander or a little drum sander for my drill press, but uh, I haven't bought a new one. I didn't use it that much. I will. A lot of times I'll take the. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, sandpaper, and, oh, I have a burnishing tool that I will wrap the sandpaper around, um, and it's basically like taking a piece of a ruler, flat ruler, and uh, using that just to give it the rigidity behind the uh, sandpaper. So, I'll find that, and I'll probably do that um, all the way around it. Now these parts, obviously you can't use a flat piece, you need to use a round piece. So, But I'll put something on behind it so to back it, and even if it's just like an ink pen. You can still go along here and get that rounded part. So, I'm going to do some of that. And uh, like I said, I'll have to do a burnishing video someday. Uh, maybe if you want to see a burnishing video, put it in, put it in the comments down below. <laughs> How's that sound? Um, another one, it would be another one of my time consuming videos because I would actually go into my process, my burnishing process. A lot of people don't do the same things that I do. Um, I like it. I do get, you know, and that's not finished burnish there. Still needs one more go at. So, I mean, it comes out pretty, comes out pretty nice when I'm done. So, I'm going to burnish this, and I'll be back.